Hello, uh, my name is Brad Dunlap, and I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about uh, my career overview and uh, career path uh, in the area of business development. So I am uh, the Vice President of Business Development at Civco Medical Solutions, and uh, I look forward to sharing with you a little bit of what that involves and uh, what my tips and advice might be on a career in that direction. So just to kind of frame up the discussion, I'm going to go through a few topics. So just a little introduction around where I work, Civco, um, my current role and sort of the customers and contacts that I interact with uh, on a daily basis. And then um, a little bit around my career journey, how I got into business development, which was uh, not necessarily a straight line, but a little bit of a, a winding path. And then what other, um, jobs or careers or experiences uh, have I had uh, in getting to where I am today. And then a little bit about what I really love and some of the challenges of my job and maybe a few ideas around pathways to business development for students that may be considering it. And then just I'll close with some, some tips and advice. So uh, I hope this is educational and informative and um, we'll get right into it. So I I work at uh, Civco Medical Solutions, which is a medical device company uh, with our headquarters in Coralville, Iowa. That's where uh, I work in, in the office at the top. But I started my career in Kelowna, which is where our uh, main manufacturing and distribution takes place. We also have some operations in Juarez, Mexico and business partners around the world. So um, just quickly, a, a little bit of background around what Civco does. Uh, we are a medical device uh, manufacturer and we've uh, established ourselves over the last 30 years as the global marketing uh, market leader in specialty devices for clinicians that use ultrasound technology in their daily work. So we were founded by a an inventor who was working at the University of Iowa. He was an ultrasonographer and he was using ultrasound every day in his practice, scanning patients. And he came up with the idea for the needle guide, which is on the right hand side of the screen here. You see a, a needle going through a, a plastic attachment that's clipped onto an ultrasound transducer. That was Vic's invention that really started Civco um, back in the very early 80s. Uh, and so he started the company and found some partners to help him get the products to market. And now, uh, you know, we're selling in over a hundred countries and we're a well-established brand name by all of the ultrasound equipment manufacturers, but also leading um, customers around the world. And uh, the slide shows that our mission is really all about making image guided procedures safer and we've really made a focus on ultrasound as our, our core uh, area of expertise. And within our business, we have kind of four uh, product areas. Um, on the, and I'll start on the left-hand side, infection control. This is a, probably about 50% of our business is really about um, covering transducers or the ultrasound probe that actually touch the, touches the patient and making sure that um, we, there's not cross-contamination from patient to patient. So we have a whole series of specialty drapes that fit snugly to the ultrasound probe and are various lengths for to provide a long sterile field uh, so that the probe can be taken into the operating room at times or into an OBGYN a suite or various places where ultrasound is used. So we have a whole range of specialty ultrasound transducer covers to protect against infection. And as you can imagine, in today's um, environment with COVID and concerns about cross-contamination between patients, this has been a very important business for us and we know that it will be a, an important business going forward. And I'll tell you a little story about a, a project we worked on related to COVID uh, in my business development capacity. Then in the bottom left, probably the, the business that launched the company is the guidance business and that is the specialty attachments that go on to an ultrasound probe that help a physician know prior to making a, a puncture where the needle will be directed within the patient. And so that's all about making um, interventional procedures such as biopsies, drainage procedures to make them safer and more efficient for, for the clinicians. 
Um, and then uh, we we acquired a business about five years ago that is in the was in the space of high level disinfection. So certain transducers that are used for imaging the heart or uh, in, imaging internal organs um, actually go inside the mouth. And so obviously they need to be dis disinfected between uses. And we make an automated cleaning device, which is called Astra, which you see pictured here that you see a large, a long probe is being placed inside. That's a business that um, Civco acquired um, recently. And we are a market leader in uh, high level disinfection systems um, for cardiology. And then the last business uh, is, uh, was also came from uh, an acquisition that we made of a company that was in the business of prostate treatment for men's health. So we have a whole range of specialty devices that are used to help image the prostate and also deliver therapeutic, um, ultrasound guided uh, therapeutic uh, devices for uh, treatment of prostate cancer for men who are diagnosed with that. So our business is about ultrasound and making ultrasound safer. We sell our products uh, to clinicians that use ultrasound as well as the equipment manufacturers. And I'll talk a little bit about who some of our big uh, ultrasound equipment manufacturer customers are. So sorry, this is a, a bit of a busy slide, but this, this really kind of describes you. The prior slide told you a little bit about our products. Now, where do we sell them and how do we sell them? Um, well, we sell to about over 10,000 healthcare clinicians within the United States. And we do that through, we have a, a field sales team, which is indicated by the, by the red um, dots on the US map. So we have uh, field sales reps uh, located around the US in large markets, and they call on hospitals directly. We also have 10 people in our inside sales team. So they're doing telephone sales support and outreach to uh, clinicians where we do have reps and also in the parts of the map where we, might, we may not have a direct rep. So um, we're selling to all the major uh, hospitals in the US. We also have some distributors in the United States. And then outside the US, uh, we're selling in over 100 countries. And we have uh, over 75 global partners that help us get to market outside of the United States. Um, so uh, we've established a, a network of independent distributors in, in major countries. Primarily, our, our longest standing one is in Japan, where we have a very strong business, but we have um, partners all over uh, Western Europe. We're, we're developing the China market. Um, we're doing a little bit of work in Latin America. Uh, so very, very diverse set of global markets that we sell into. Uh, so not just U.S. physicians, but physicians and clinicians around the world. And then lastly, and kind of on the uh, right-hand side of the slide is what we call our OEM. OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer. So these are the companies that actually make the ultrasound technology, the transducers. And so we have teams that have developed um, custom attachments that fit on the various types of probes that are being manufactured by the companies you see here. A lot of them are companies that you may have heard of before, um, Philips, um, Philips Medical Systems. It's a Dutch company with its headquarters here in the US in the Pacific Northwest. Siemens Healthineers, which is a German company and they have um, their US operations out of California. Canon is the, is the former Toshiba Medical Systems, which is a Japanese company, GE, you know, a, a big US company. Sonosite Fujifilm, which is uh, out of Japan. Uh, Samsung, which is out of Korea, BK Medical, which is a Danish company, Mindray, which is a Chinese company, Hitachi Aloka, also uh, Japanese. So as you can see, and, and my part of my responsibility is to establish um, strong working relationships with those OEM, those manufacturer customers of ours. So you can see on a daily basis, uh, myself or my team, are on the phone across time zones, uh, working across different cultures with engineering teams and sales and marketing teams and R&D teams uh, around the world working for, for big companies. And that's one of the things that I always found exciting, you know, working and originally starting with Civco and working out of Kelowna, Iowa, kind of a little bit smaller, uh, smaller market and, um, 
but yet reaching out to Silicon Valley in the U.S. and to and working with big brand name companies uh, like like Siemens and Philips and GE. So um, we sell uh, through lots of different channels, three main channels directly in the U.S. through distributors outside the U.S. and through our OEM partners. And the OEM partners have become a very important component of my of my job responsibility. So let's talk a little bit about um, my job responsibility, which is, which is business development. And I think business development can mean a lot of things uh, in various companies. And, and sometimes it's, it's seen as kind of a sales function. But at Civco and in, in the medical device space, um, business development is um, uh, the department and the function that's really looking at ways that we can achieve long-term growth uh, for the business uh, through strategic initiatives. So some of those strategic initiatives could be expanding our opportunities to sell to established strategic customers that we have. So those OEM clients that I mentioned, what can we do to sell more products uh, through GE or through Siemens or through Philips? It's also looking for new strategic customers. So maybe there are um, new companies that are coming into the market or um, new technologies that are coming into the market what that our products could be useful for. So looking for um, not only expanding your business with, with existing customers, but looking at uh, new potential strategic customers to, to pursue. Um, and then it's also looking at new markets. So uh, if we're well established in infection control and guidance and high level disinfection. Is there another clinical area or ultrasound related um, opportunity for us to provide value to our customers by entering a new market space? And then a lot of what the business development team is looking into is innovation. And you see the graphic with the funnel here. The way we think about um, our innovation programs is really a, to try to drive product vitality. And product vitality is just a term that says um, how much of your business is coming from new markets or new customers. So you want to make sure that you're continually bringing forward new products and that you're finding new customers and you're not just selling the same products to the same customers over time. Um, of course, you want to retain those customers, but what can you do to continue, continue to innovate and to bring new products to market? So the way we at Civco kind of look at our innovation programs is we have four major um, platforms that help us deliver that innovation, um, which are represented by the, by, the, um, by the circles within the funnel. So there's collaborating with our external partners. So this would be um, having relationships with our key customers like GE and Philips and Siemens uh, and others. But it's also having uh, partnerships with our uh, universities, so local universities. Our founder was, was from the University of Iowa. We have a, uh, a growing and strong relationship with the University of Iowa, but we're also working with a number of other re research institutions uh, around the US and around the world who are doing uh, potentially inventions or new procedures and are looking for new technology to help them do their jobs better. So we look to collaborate with, with, with those universities for potential product ideas and technology ideas that we can help them bring to market. And then the other thing we look at is small innovative startup companies that may have a novel technology or, a, or an interesting way of, of manufacturing or developing a, a solution that fits in our market space. So that's a responsibility of myself and my team is to, to work with those startups. So we look externally at potential partners uh, we also look at our existing products and say, hey, are there ways we can get into different markets? So could we be selling our infection control products or our guidance products into a different clinical marketing, uh, clinical um, area? So one major segment that um, we're looking at expanding is in vitro fertilization. So ultrasound is often used to, um, to assist in the process of um, artificial insemination for uh, women and, and, and families who are looking to, uh, to get pregnant. And so we're looking at, are there ways that we can um, develop new products or partner with companies that are working in this space to develop that, that market? Um, the other, the other uh, way that we get kind of opportunities for innovation is just through our internal teams. 
So I have a small uh, team with some engineering folks and some business development folks and some strategic accounts um, individuals, and, and we have engineers that support us, but we at CIFCO are looking for ideas from, from anyone. You could be in customer service, you could be in quality, you could be in manufacturing, uh, you could be in the, in the field in sales, uh, you could be in the finance department. If you've got to have an interesting idea about a way to do something better, or a new product that could solve a problem and, and help us um, capture some market, then we take those submissions and we have an internal process where we, we vet those through, our, through a committee and we actually give um, incentives to our, to our team for submitting ideas to try and keep ideas coming through. My team last year went through over 100 new ideas which had come through um, come through internal processes or through our through our own uh, associates, which is exciting. And then the closest uh, circle to the to the end of the funnel is R and D. So, you know, maybe you're working with an external partner, or you're working with your internal team, and and you you decide that you've got a great idea. Well, now you probably need to do some research and develop and, and start to prototype that idea to test it to see if if it really works. And so we have R and D resources within Civco. Uh, and then in some instances where maybe the device is so novel, we don't have the know-how within our organization, we may work with external partners, again, potentially um, research institutions or, or, or maybe uh, engineering partnerships or even some of our customers may help us to do um, development programs. So um, kind of a lot of words to try to describe what business development does and is and, and who it interacts with, but it's coming up with new ideas, coming up with new products, coming up with potentially new markets, and finding ways to partner with external um, strategic customers uh, to bring new products to market and to drive product vitality and to make sure that the, the business is healthy and can be growing long into the future in a profitable way. Um, so I think I covered everything there. Oh, I, I guess maybe I could just add one more point on um, one of the things I think that business development is often thought of as is the acquisition part of the company. So, you know, that, that's certainly a component of business development. And, and we have made, as I mentioned, uh, when I was describing our product line, Sipco has made some acquisitions through the years uh, of looking at a, a, a company and uh, adding it to your portfolio because it has a fit with your customers. It has a fit with your, um, with your business and your strategy and your plans. And so certainly that's one way that you can grow your business is you can acquire uh, a company. An another way that you can uh, add vitality is to license technology. So that would mean you would find someone who has maybe a patent or an invention and um, they don't maybe have the, the financial wherewithal or the resources to bring the product to market. Potentially Civco could say, Hey, we'd love, we love this idea. We think there's a great market opportunity. We know how to develop it, get it through um, the regulatory process to make it available to sale for sale. Because in the medical device industry, you have to pass a lot of um, regulatory hurdles and do a lot of testing before you can just start, start selling devices. So we may say to a physician, hey, we can get it, we can prototype it, we can get it through uh, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, administration, which we're required to do to sell our products in the US. Uh, and then we would do a, a financial agreement whereby maybe we pay a percentage of our sales to that inventor. Uh, Civco would be taking it to market and maybe branding it and selling it. And the inventor gets, um, gets some revenue for his or her idea. So we also try to establish relationships with clinician inventors as well as companies who have products and they're just looking for someone to distribute their product, particularly some European companies or Asian companies who don't have a US sales team. Um, we often engage in conversations with them around hey, maybe um, working through Civco and, and um, taking advantage of our established sales channel might be a good way for you to get your product into the market. So lots of different ways to bring new uh, and innovative technologies and ideas into the market and really that's what, what business development and my team does. So um, just maybe as a segue as well from 
some of those external partners and just to reinforce that one of the things that's been exciting and I really appreciate about my job is I, I get a chance to work with some of the top minds at some of the top institutions uh, across the across the US and across the globe. And so you can see some of the logos you may recognize um, names like the Cleveland Clinic, which is very much a pioneer and, and a leader in um, lots of spaces of medicine, uh, the University of Iowa here locally, the, the Mayo Clinic, the National Institute of Health, and I'll tell you a little bit of a story around a recent project that I worked on um, with an investigator at the NIH. So we're very fortunate to have um, connections with these, these institutions across the U.S. and and uh, my team has the task of getting to know the right researchers and investigators at these institutions. But we also work with them to help educate um, users of our technology. So it's one thing to have a product that you can sell. It's also making sure that the physicians and the target clinicians that uh, are potential customers, they know how to use it, why to use it, what benefit it provides. So we do a lot of um, training programs for residents and um, uh, students that are coming into fields where we have products and we partner with with some academic institutions to deliver training for them. We've done some clinical research and, and, and publishing articles um, showing the benefits of some of the technologies that uh, uh, that we've developed. We put together advisory boards. So if we're thinking of introducing a new product into a particular space, we may uh, assemble a group of eight to 10 doctors who are specialists in the area to give us feedback on um, you know, the features of the device. Is the device um, at the right price point? It, can it be used safely and effectively for, for its in, uh, intended purpose? And so you know, having this network that can um, provide us with insights uh, on new technologies and new innovations is obviously uh, very, very valuable to, to, uh, to our team. So uh, to the extent we can, we, we try to keep very strong relationships uh, at all these, at these companies, and we've actually funded some research through, through, through many of them. So now transitioning a little bit from uh, what I do or the types of work that is done in business development, I can share uh, just briefly a little bit around my own personal um, career journey and background. So um, I'm originally from, from Washington, Iowa, Southeast Iowa. Didn't grow up all that far from Kelowna, which is where I got my first job out of college. But while I was in high school, I, you know, I was in a lot of sports. I wrestled, I played football and baseball. I was active in extracurricular activities. I was a member of the student Congress. I wrote for the, uh, the newspaper, both when I was in junior high and also, uh, when I was in high school and I, and I was a peer helper. Um, so pretty, pretty involved, didn't really know exactly um, what I wanted to do. I, I knew that I could write fairly well and those kind of classes were, came easily to me. So I was thinking of uh, doing something that direction and I had kind of um, thought about potentially going to law school. So I had heard that, you know, an English major and a philosophy minor or a political science minor would be a good preparation for law school. So when I went to Central College in Pella, um, I kind of chose Central because I wanted to stay involved in sports. So I, I played baseball there. I also was really interested in their study abroad um, program. And, and so I, I did, I had a chance to, to spend a semester in London and I did an internship in the House of Parliament. And so I kind of went down the track of this kind of writing and philosophy and political science um, thinking that I was potentially going to go to law school. Um, but later, and I definitely had a great experience. I, I learned a lot at Central, had a very good experience there, had a broad-based liberal arts education with, with a focus on English and, and a minor in philosophy. Um, but towards the end of my time, um, I was also doing some work study for the alumni office. I was doing writing direct mail and writing for the alumni news magazine. I was writing um, for our international studies office, recruiting students to come on campus. Um, and I was giving campus tours. And so I kind of got interested in marketing communications and, and college promotion. As I started to think, I wasn't quite as sure if I was going to go the direction of uh, law school and, and started to think about a marketing career. So, so after, after Central, um, I 
was back home in Washington and I was applying for some grad programs and kind of thinking about different marketing um, types of positions. And I saw an ad in the paper for a, a, an editor for a news magazine at a company named Civco in Kelowna. And I thought, wow, you know, the, a device company, a medical device company uh, close to, to where I had grown up. I, I didn't know anything about it. It was very small at the time. Uh, Dick was running the company. There were about, uh, I think, 24 employees when I applied. I, I became the 26th employee and I was hired on to be a marketing specialist. And at the time, the company was rather small. We didn't have large departments or, you know, we everyone did many jobs. But one of my first roles was to edit the news magazine. And then I started because I had some uh, experience having studied abroad in, in London. <clears throat> I had interest in, in international travel. And so I started to work with some of our distributors in France and in Italy and in Scandinavia and Japan and really liked that work and um, enjoyed um, working across international borders and, and um, kind of training them and educating them on our products and, and learning about how they use the, you know, how their medical systems were different than ours and, and things like that. So I really enjoyed the international element of distributor development. And I also started to work with some of our OEMs or some of those key clients that I mentioned, uh, such as GE and Siemens and Philips. I was responsible for a few of those, mainly the, the European ones and also enjoyed that. And that all led to uh, a very unique opportunity for me, which was Civco's main competitors were uh, European companies at the time. So one of them was a Swedish company uh, in the needle guide business, and one of them was a Dutch company. And we felt that we had a strong market position in the US, uh, but, and a strong market position in Japan through our uh, distributor there. We decided to, um, open an office in Europe and uh, I was chosen to, to take on that task. So I uh, moved to Brussels, Belgium and, and launched the Civco um, Europe office, which was a fantastic experience. And um, there I was responsible for building our international distributors, training them, selecting some for certain markets, making sure they had um, the support that they needed to uh, grow their business, and then also working with our um, European, the European branches of our biggest customers, the GE Europe uh, office, the Philips Europe office, the Siemens Europe office, and, and so forth. And that was a great, great experience. And I did that um, for a couple of years. And right about that time, um, the founder of the company uh, was transitioning out and um, we were kind of deploying a different distribution model. And so the company asked me to, to, to move home. <clears throat> and um, I decided that uh, it had been a great experience and I was enjoying my time in Europe and that I would, I would um, prefer to stay in Europe. So I parted the company on good terms and I joined Baxter Healthcare, which had its uh, headquarters, European headquarters, uh, in Brussels, which is where I was, uh, where I was living. So I took on a position there and spent another five years. So um, spent seven years living and working in Europe, which was probably one of the most enriching experiences, both professionally and personally. Both my daughters were born uh, in, in uh, Belgium. And I just learned a ton, uh, both in my Civco role, but also in my, my Baxter role. Um, and this was uh, working on some devices for um, dialysis therapy. So I spent five years doing that and then decided it was about time to try and get back to the U.S. And um, they transferred me, Baxter transferred me from a European position to um, become senior director of marketing in their global team. So I had responsibility for Europe still, but also the U.S. and Japan and, and Latin America and worked on a few major programs. The, the top program was the Vivia home hemodialysis system, which was a, a, a device designed for patients to use at home and to really improve the outcomes of traditional dialysis, which today is done in a clinic three times per week. This was about doing dialysis while you slept at night, seven days a week and getting much, much better uh, clinical outcomes. So something really exciting to uh, plan for the launch of and and, and uh, really learned a lot doing that work. 
But then uh, after seven years in Chicagoland, I was interested in getting closer to home and back to family who are still here in Iowa. And so uh, by this time, Civco had done a lot of growth. I mentioned a couple of the acquisitions. Well, those had taken place while I was at Baxter. So Civco, which when I started was 26 employees, had grown to 300 or so, I think. And I was looking for someone to... Um, join the team in, in, a, in a marketing capacity. So I, I rejoined Civco, having left them when I was in Europe under very good terms. Um, I rejoined the company and was um, vice president of marketing and product management. And so really leveraged a lot of the experience that I had had when I was at Baxter. I was leading a team of product managers. I had the um, marketing communications function as well as we started a clinical marketing uh, team. So great experience there. Then, uh, then I decided to have a bit of a career change out of the device marketing space and had a, a two year stint working for um, a colleague that I had gotten to know at, during my time at Baxter who ran an ad agency out of Tampa, Florida, but that also had an office in London and was doing a lot of work for um, major medical device manufacturers and he needed someone to, to run his healthcare team. So I came in and helped him set that up and, and built the business. I was uh, traveling to Tampa, but working from my home um, for a couple of years. And then Civco had an opportunity for a business development role that really just the, the traveling back and forth to Tampa and the traveling in and out of Chicago, which is where a lot of the business was for, for, for the agency uh, was, was, was a lot. And, um, I was really interested in getting back into, a um, more steady, less travel, uh, responsibility. So I rejoined Civco about two years ago in the VP business development, um, position that I described. And I think you can maybe tell that, you know, a, had a lot of different experiences, both with distributors and with uh, major customers and OEMs and in Europe and, and global. And I think all of that really helped um, put me in a position to, to do the, the job that I, that I do now. Um, so that's a quick, maybe not so quick background and career journey. Um, maybe transitioning a little bit to um, things that I love and things that I find to be challenging in, in, in my current role. So, I would say I never would have set out to be in healthcare. I, I'm, I wasn't super switched on into the sciences in, in, in high school and in college. I took, I took a couple science classes. I was okay, but I wasn't, it wasn't a passion of mine. Um, and I would even admit that the first procedure that I went to when I worked for Civco was, a was an amniocentesis procedure and I, I passed out. I, I got nervous. I didn't like the sight of blood, I didn't like needles. And I thought, okay, I'm going to get fired and I'm never going to have a career here because I can't even handle going in and seeing a procedure. Well, I didn't get fired. I got over it. I've seen many, many more, much more gruesome procedures, but I guess all that to say, you wouldn't have, if you had told me when I was in high school that I'd be working in the healthcare space, I would have not believed you but I think it's been a great spot for me and it's a good spot for anyone because it's about um, helping others. You know, the mission of healthcare is um, trying to contribute to people's uh, well-being. So I love that about my job. The other thing which you can tell from my history is <clears throat> I've enjoyed um, the global uh, aspect of getting to know folks across different cultures and, and traveling and, uh, you know, I've spent time in, in lots of different countries and met a lot of different people with a lot of different backgrounds. And I find that uh, fascinating. And I think in this world, uh, in our current environment, in most businesses, everything's becoming more global. So the more you understand, even if it's a global competitor, uh, the more you understand uh, the way business is done outside the U.S., the better off you're going to be for even, you know, not only export market, but even protecting your own local market. So I think the global thing is, is, is great. I, I like the fact that I was working in a high tech business, but I was in a family friendly setting here in Iowa, didn't have, you know, traffic and crime and lots of the things that you might get in, in bigger cities. So um, the balance between uh, high tech work, but uh, laid back lifestyle was appealing to me 
in, in business development, there's a lot of diversity of things that you do, lots of different projects, lots of different uh, skills that you develop. And uh, I find that uh, stimulating. I've been fortunate to have a great team through almost all my, my jobs, really. I, and I, I definitely love building teams and working in teams and, and the CIPCO team is, it's just a great, a great place to work. And, um, you know, working with people that are a lot smarter than me, engineers and, and, uh, clinicians and, uh, folks with, with long histories and careers in, 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 in business. And, uh, I, I love that. And, and the other good thing about healthcare is it is generally speaking a, a stable market. There's, there's going to be a need to um, provide healthcare to the population and that's, and that's not going to go away. I, I say it's fairly stable. Obviously when things like COVID hit and procedures go down, certain procedures go up, but other procedures go down, you know, we like many other businesses have, have uh, seen the impact of that, but long-term healthcare is a very um, stable uh, sector to be in. When I think about um, the challenges, I think you know one of the benefits is also a little bit of the challenge. The benefit is there's a lot of diversity of work and projects, but that also means you really have to make sure you can focus on the things that are most important and not get easily distracted and, and prioritize your time because uh, there's so much you can do and could do and there's so many different market opportunities and so many different directions that um, you may be hearing from your customers, you may be hearing from your internal teams. And so making sure that you can uh, prioritize those things that you pursue uh, can sometimes be challenging. The other thing that's a, that's a, a threat and a challenge just in, in general in business is there, there are new competitive um, players that are coming into the market. And, you know, like many businesses, we see that in China. Uh, we see that from, from other uh, parts of the world. So trying to stay ahead of competition um, is always, uh, can always be a challenge. Um, I think attracting and retaining uh, talent on your team is, is super critical. And um, we've got a lot of great folks on our team, some of whom are based here and work out of the uh, Coralville office, but several of my team members are remote. I have a, a team member in, um, in Connecticut, um, in, in New Haven, where Yale is. I have a, um, a colleague in New Jersey. And, um, you know, I think making a working environment that you can get the, the best folks and you can retain them and, and motivate them um, is always just talent is so important. And, um, and that can always be, it's always a, cha a challenge to, to get the right people. And I think Sipco's done a great job of that. But as we grow, we're going to need more and more and more. And I guess that's partly what this whole workplace learning initiative is all about, is, is, is developing the right talent locally. Um, the other thing is finding the balance of financial returns on investment opportunities. So you know, there's a lot of different directions that we could take the business, but always being able to balance that with, okay, but which making sure that you're going to, you're going to invest in those that are going to give the best return for the company and the organization. And uh, that means there's a, there's a saying, you know, you got to kiss a lot of frogs to find your prince in business development. That's definitely developing business deals and so forth. You got to talk to a lot of people. You got to go through a long, sometimes a long process of, negotiations and, and, and um, uh, diligence and research. And, you know, at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you're going to invest in the ones that pay off the best. So you, you, you have a lot of no's. You have a lot of things you spend time on that at the end of the day don't go forward. And so you have to be patient. You have to be disciplined. You have to have stamina. And you have to kind of get used to the fact that you're not going to you know, you're not going to hit the, you're not going to hit a home run with every uh, discussion that you have. So, you know, it's a great fertile space for uh, developing skills development and, and interacting with a lot of different um, types of companies and peoples and markets and, and all that is exciting. But at the same time, staying focused and staying on strategy is, is a critical success factor to, uh, to making progress. Um, so now maybe just, just a little bit on um, ideas for folks who might have some interest in or want, want to learn a little bit more about getting into business development. Just different ideas. These are not scientific by any stretch. This is just based on my own experience, I would say. 
you know, college degree would likely be a, um, an expectation of an employer in this space, I would think, uh, especially if in, in, in the medical side. I think there are maybe three different tracks. There's what I would call the traditional track. That would be a degree in business or marketing or management or maybe finance or economics. Um, talk about the fact that there's quite a bit of data analytics and, and numbers associated with structuring good business development deals. So folks with those skill sets are, are um, helpful. There would also be the more technical track. So someone who comes from engineering or science or a medical space, they would understand how the products are, are used and, and um, maybe how the products are designed and a little bit more the, the technical side, uh, which is not my expertise, but luckily I have people on my team that do have that. And then kind of the, the path that I went, which was a little bit more um, liberal arts or broad, kind of focused on um, communication and, and analysis and problem solving, but not really in, in the business section. So something like English or political science or history or sociology, I've, I've known folks and seen folks be successful that have come from that. I would say it's not as common, but it certainly um, would, be, would be possible from a, from a college degree perspective. And then like getting into the business development in terms of other prior roles, I, I list here, you know, if you've done sales, in particular business to business sales, I think is helpful. Uh, if you had a marketing or product management role would be interesting. Um, some communications, R&D, development, uh, engineering, finance, and clinical, if, you, if it's in the medical space, I think clinical would be um, a good background potentially for business development. Um, but if you're looking for um, just thinking about ways that you could expose yourself to some of the things that are important in business development early in your career exploration, you know, I think maybe doing an internship or a, a marketing role in a sales organization, working for a distribution business, working in a startup, I think probably one of the reasons that I was able to learn our business well and, and see different elements like, like marketing and R and D and product management was, you know, in a startup business, you got to wear a lot of hats and you get exposed to a lot. And so you learn on the job a tremendous amount, you know, you, you get an MBA, uh, OJT is what I say, um, on the job, meaning on the job. So I think working in a startup would give you a great kind of background for, for potential business development because you just understand how businesses work and the challenges they face and so forth. I think also maybe working in a, a services or development business, like an agency, ad agency, or an engineering services, and that selling your work business to business would give you some insights into the, the business development landscape. I, I'm a big fan of international exposure, especially if you have plans to work in a, in a role or a, an industry that's, got, that's global in nature. I just think it's, um, it's just a great, um, it's a great tool kit to draw upon having exposure to um, international businesses, international competitors, international markets. Um, and then, you know, oh, maybe even a little closer, like what, what other things do I think helped for, for me, you know, participating in team sports and clubs and, and volunteering and, and, and just anything where you're working in a team, because I'll, I'll talk later on kind of the, the success factors. I think, you know, getting, getting work done often means, being a member of a team and being able to, to work in a team. So I don't claim that this, this slide is the, uh, is the prescription by any stretch or it's the right approach, but these are just a few ideas around potential pathways. So um, just wanted to talk briefly about what would it take or what skills do I feel like are important to the role and do I use on a very regular basis? So kind of broke them into four different areas. Communication for sure. So listening, listening to the market, understanding what people are saying, um, being able to interpret truth from, from fiction, uh, being able to um, write effectively and communicate effectively and present effectively. So all those kind of basic communication skills are important in business development, but I would argue in anything in marketing and business, they're all, they're super key. Um, and then maybe moving over to the global business acumen, I talked already about the importance of some international exposure if you're gonna work in an international business. So cultural awareness, these days we're working across lots of um, 
uh, people's backgrounds, both uh, you know where where they're from and what they've been exposed to. I think having that cultural sensitivity makes you a better uh, business development um, professional. Understanding economic drivers, both you know for your company and in the broader industry and in different markets, and being able to assess a market landscape and really having strategic uh, insights and understanding your business and how a potential deal would would serve your business is, is clearly very, very important. I mentioned on the bottom left, I mentioned team and people leadership, you know, things that, that happen every day, even though we're not a big team, but there's, you know, coaching and motivating the team, making sure you're work, working on the right priorities. So setting goals and making the most important ones stay on the top and problem solving. I mean, a lot of, a lot of problem solving isn't necessarily just with, with your team, but with external teams or, uh, internal teams that aren't, you know, directly yours and working together with the sales team or working together with the development team or working with the customer. Um, I think those skills <clears throat> are, are, are critical. And then, of course, increasingly, you know, data and, and analytics are factor into any major, you know, business um, decision, you know, looking at, you know, what, what, what customers are telling you, looking at, you know, industry reports, analyzing sales trends or um, just just general trends in the market being able to um, having some financial acumen and looking at financial data looking at technical and clinical data all of that being able to analyze information and get the appropriate insights from the information to write to make the right decision is uh, is critical so you know kind of a broad mix i think of skills and and i wouldn't say everybody has all of these to the very highest level, but a good balance of, of, of these four quadrants, I think would, would put someone in a, in a good position to have a, have a career in business development. Uh, so last slide, um, just any tips that I might, might offer, I think are, are kind of broad in nature, but, you know, I think be a constant learner, you know, work to stay current in your field and make sure you update your skills. If there's one thing we know is that, you know, technology changes and markets change and the way we do things change. Medicine is changing rapidly. So um, just be aware that, you know, to be successful, you're going to need to be able to adapt and grow and evolve and um, keep your skills fresh and, um, and, and be a constant learner. I think the other thing which I've mentioned is just having a, a, an understanding of the broader world. Um, I, I might be um, a little bit of a zealot in this department, but I think just traveling, getting out there, reading books outside your field, you know, read, reading the paper, following global events. I think the world is getting smaller and smaller. Business is getting more and more connected. The better you understand that context and environment, the, the better leader you'll be. Um, this has also been a theme, just working on teams and leading teams. Um, <clears throat> if you aspire to be in a leadership position, you're likely not going to be doing the work yourself or the majority of the work yourself. You're going to be getting it done through, through your team. So being able to be a good, put the right people in the right roles and give them clear direction and um, motivation and rewards and recognition and so forth. So I think just anything that involves teamwork is, is really how, how things are going to get done in many companies. Um, and then I guess I would just say, if, if you don't think you're capable, you know, if don't think that if you're not super capable or you're not naturally interested or skilled, you can't end up, I would, I would have not expected to be in business as an English uh, major philosophy minor and certainly not uh, in the medical business just because I just, I didn't have a lot of um, natural orientation, but it's something that I've learned. I've loved. It's a career that I would recommend to as, as a great potential career path so uh but I, I definitely wasn't on that path initially and then i guess the last thing i would just say is um you know effective communication skills are, are key in any job or career and i think again if you're gonna if you're gonna lead people i think in my career being able to uh, develop a story or explain a situation or present an idea um, was probably one of the most important um, skills that I used, you know, 
in, in my early days at, at Civco and my, my time at Baxter. And I just think it just, it, it will help you in any career that you choose. So communication skills, reading, writing, expressing yourself clearly, um, would definitely be, um, I think valuable. I believe that's my last slide. I'll just close by saying, I hope this was helpful. Um, I wish you the best in your career search and journey. And if you have any questions, uh, you can contact me here at uh, brad.dunlap at civco.com. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, share a little bit of my story and um, best wishes to you.